Hello and welcome back to my Tasty Tennis series. I'm Tess and today I'm going to be making a delicious pork ragu and homemade gnocchi. Okay, so I have all of my vegetables already chopped. I have an onion here, one carrot and one stick of celery and I'm just going to start frying them off in a couple of tablespoons of oil. For more information on this recipe, just check the description box. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my onions, first of all, and celery, and the carrot, all at once. It's on about a medium heat. We just want to sweat it down, we don't want to caramelize it. So the onion, carrot and celery has sweated down quite nicely, so I'm going to go in with the pork mince. If you just rip it up a little bit as it goes in. So we want to get the meat really nice and browned, we want to get a really nice caramelization on the bottom of the pan. This will give the sauce a really great flavour. So I'm turning up my heat to really high. This is a really great £10 meal because pork is so cheap. Um, it's a really underrated piece of meat, um, or it's a really under, underrated animal in general, I think. Apart from pork belly and bacon, people don't really think to use pork as much as I think that they should. Ragus are just fantastic. Anything slow cooked is always going to be good. Okay, so I'm getting some really nice colour on my pork mince now. It's really frying off nicely. So I'm going to go with my tomato puree. I'm going to be adding uh, between six and eight tablespoons. About that much. So you want to just mash it into the meat and really fry it off until it becomes dark and sticky and you can smell the cooked tomato. So once this is caramelized enough, I'm going to go in with 100 ml of red wine just to deglaze the pan and get all the flavor off the bottom. About right. So it's just going to bubble and cook off. We want to cook out all the alcohol before we add the water. Yeah, if you don't want to add wine, you go with extra herbs. You could add half a stock cube for some extra flavor. You could add you know, instead of water, you could go in with vegetable stock or chicken stock. You don't have to use red wine at all. All right, so the red wine's cooked off now. I'm just going to add my water. The last thing to add is my bay leaves. I'm just going to scatter those on top. So my sauce is bubbling really nicely, and I'm going to turn that down to a really low simmer. I'm going to pop a lid on, and I'm just going to leave it for an hour and a half to two hours. So I've got a kilo of peeled potatoes, which I've boiled and slightly mashed just here. And to that, I'm going to add 300 grams of flour. I'm just going to pop that in. And now, one egg. And then I'm just going to give it a mash up with my potato masher. You can put it in a food processor, it's a lot easier, but if you don't have one, don't worry. You can mash it by hand, it just takes a little bit longer. Okay, so I've mashed my gnocchi up nicely in the pan. It's become quite sticky. You want it to be quite sticky, but also malleable. If you do put it in a food processor, only give it a quick blitz. Don't overdo it, otherwise it'll be really hard to manage. I'm just gonna flour my surface generously. This recipe is good for about six people, so having two extra portions made up, which boil up in two minutes, would be great for you know, the next few nights to come if you have some pesto you want to use with it or something else. For about this much dough, you want about two teaspoons of salt to season it. We're going to break it up into quarters, and I'm just going to roll it out with my hands like this. So just gently roll it out. Okay, so it's in this long kind of caterpillar shape, and all I need to do now is just kind of cut it into little pieces, like so. So I've just popped them onto a floured baking tray, and I'm just pushing some fork marks into the top of the gnocchi. It makes them look a little bit pretty, and it also gives the ragu something to hold on to when I'm serving it up. 
So there's a bit of dough here that I'm just going to pop in the fridge. And I've got my pan of boiling water on, so I'm just going to get my gnocchi on and ready to serve. You know they're done when they float to the surface. It just takes a few moments. OK, so they're floating to the surface, which means they're done. So I'm going to take my slotted spoon, and I'm just going to fish them out. If you want more recipes like this, just click the subscribe button. And now I'm just going to check on my ragu. So it's been simmering away for about two hours now, an hour and a half, two hours. And it's looking really, really rich and red winey. It's looking pretty good. I think this is just a perfect dish to show that you don't have to spend very much money to make really, really yummy food. So I've got my gnocchi here. And my sauce is ready. And I'm just going to spoon it over. So I'm just going to give it a little sprinkle of Parmesan. You don't have to use Parmesan if you don't want to. You can have it as is. But I love a bit of Parmesan cheese. Mm. So there you have it. My delicious slow-cooked pork ragu with homemade gnocchi. Smells incredible. Come back next time for another episode of my Tasty Tennis series.